Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be answering some questions on the DJI Digital FPV system and I want to just talk about some stuff that I keep seeing posted online. And at the end of this video I'm going to talk about this bomb site that you see in front of me here. Now I've actually been building up my new 6 inch freestyle quad today and I'll talk about that at the end of the video and give you guys a walkthrough of what I've actually done because there are some interesting things with this um, specifically around this frame as well. But before we do that, I'm going to answer some questions that I keep seeing being posted. The first one is what flight controllers is the DJI Digital FPV system compatible with? Now, this is really a multi-part question. However, the basics are as follows. If you're going to use it with an RC, it needs to support SBUS. So any flight controller that supports SBUS, it will work with. If you want to be able to see the battery voltage from the OSD, it needs to be an MSP compatible flight controller with either iNav, Betaflight, CleanFlight, any of them. It does not work with KISS, FL or PixHawk or Mavlink at the moment. You can use it without OSD on those units. However, if you want the OSD, you have to use it with basically Betaflight compatible via MSP over UART. Um, hopefully that might get improved in the future, but that is how it is today. But other than that, if you're not worried about OSD, it's SBUS. You can use it with any flight controller you want. Next question I keep seeing being asked is, do you have to use the DJI remote controller? And the answer to that is no, you can use this system with any remote you want. It is a five gigahertz FPV system and DJI's own remote is five gig as well. So that works alongside the ear unit and the goggles. However, you could instead buy it without the remote, still use it with your Tyrannis, still use it with your Crossfire, anything like that. You don't have to use the DJI remote if you're new to the hobby and you haven't got a remote, the whole kit is probably the best way to go. However, you can still use it with your existing gear if you want to. The next question I keep seeing being asked is about the OSD. Now, I keep seeing people saying, can I use it with Betaflight OSD? Can I use it with this or that? The OSD for this is taken from data provided from your flight controller. It cannot overlay a Betaflight OSD or any other of the OSDs out there on the image because the camera is physically attached to the ear unit. It is all digital. It's not like analog where you can pump it through and overlay an OSD on top. Currently, the DJI OSD only takes voltage from the flight controller and we're hoping that gets improved soon. However, it does mean you can't use it with any of the OSDs that are out there. It is simply telemetry data. Further to that, as I said about the camera, it is a custom one and it is only DJI's you can use. You cannot use a standard analog FPV camera. It is a dedicated unit supplied with the kit. People ask a lot about frames and what frames are compatible. Well, it's down to how much modification you want to do. For instance, here I'm using an Artem and Chameleon and I've actually modified it and I'll talk about that at the end. However, there are a few frames that it should work with with zero modification out of the box. The first is the Flywheel Mr. Croc. That is a longer five or six inch frame and it allows you to mount the ear unit at the back and still have plenty of room for your stack in the middle. There's the iFlight DC5 HD, which was released last week and that is a frame which again will allow you to fit it with zero modification and it does come with some 3d printed parts as well and there's also the TransTech laser hd which is the frame dji are recommending however i have seen this stuffed into a three inch frame without problems as well it really comes down to your board height and stack height because on a frame like this which is 22 mil height, there isn't enough space. However, there are many of the freestyle frames that have really high stack height available. And it means you can actually mount the ear unit above the remote controller. The next question I keep seeing my talked about a lot is about the FCC and CE. Um, as I've showed in my other video, you can override it and force it into FCC mode by placing a file on the SD card. Please check out that video. There's a link to it in the description of this video. But again, I only condone that if you're allowed to do it in your region. The reason we released that was there were some guys having problems getting it into FCC in FCC areas because of the way DJI activate it. But yes, you can change it between CE and FCC mode. 
Antennas is another question that is a very big topic on this system and they are all replaceable and you're seeing a lot of people changing stuff, messing around with stuff on Facebook, on forums. There's going to be a lot of development in that area. Out the box, it's all left-hand polarized. So if you're gonna change one or, or, or a couple, make sure you stick with the correct polarization. However, if you're gonna change them all, then you can change it whichever way you want. Now, the understanding is at the moment that the bottom two antennas on the goggles are receive the one on the top is transmit the other one is receive however that isn't confirmed but that's the current belief and i have seen some reports of guys getting some really impressive range even on 25 milliwatts by just swapping out the top two for directional antennas but again it depends the antenna that you are using on the back of the unit as well um, and remember they are mmcx's so if you are going to change them you need to make sure you get the right connector but you can and we're going to see a a lot of development on antennas over the next couple of months with this system. Obviously, one main and really hot topic is analog FPV. The goggles do not support analog. However, there is an analog video input, which means you can connect it up to a receiver. Now, I've started to see some people doing some interesting stuff and fitting a fat shark module into a bay and mounting it on the side of the goggles. I honestly think someone will release a receiver for this really soon. I honestly do. I think they'd be bonkers not to. I would expect to see an analog receiver with a plug-in jack on the side within three months. Uh, that's my personal opinion on it. The reports are analog works really well in NTSC. Um, the lag seems to be okay with most systems. Some people are saying with certain systems though they are seeing more lag, but we're using a quality FPV system absolutely no problems at all. There is a complaint that you can't hide the brightness and contrast adjustments on the screen when you are in analog mode. Um, that has been fed back and we're hoping DJI do something about that in the near future. The next thing is power. What can you power it with? Well, it is two to four S on the A unit. And you need to make sure that you do not go outside of that range. Um, if you are using a 6S system, you're going to need to power it either off your flight controller or a voltage regulator or something like a BC to take the current down. However, make sure you get it right. It is very easy to burn something else by getting this wrong. So do make sure you get it 100%. Finally, the big one I keep seeing is EU. When will it be available in the EU? My understanding is it is imminent so watch this space and hopefully you guys will be able to get your hands on it very shortly. That's pretty much most of the main questions I keep seeing on that and I hope that information has been helpful. Now I'm going to quickly talk about what I've built here today. Now I'm doing a lot of work on the workshop and you're going to see the channel change over the next couple of weeks actually as I do that. However today I've been building up my six inch freestyle racer. I've used the Armaton uh, chameleon frame but I have made a modification to it because the ear unit doesn't fit with the flight stack in the centre as standard. It is too long. Rather than move the flight stack forward, I decided to create my own back end for the frame. And I've actually 3D printed this and I've designed it and I'm going to stick this on Thingiverse shortly as well. So it'll be available for everyone to get if you want to get it too. And the way it works is it extends the frame out the back, allowing the ear unit just to go back far enough so you don't actually have to move the flight stack. I'm not a fan of moving flight stacks on frames. I didn't want to redrill it. So the, in the end, my decision was to make my own custom back, leave the brackets off that they supply with it and do it that way. And it's gained me just enough space to be able to cram it all in, as you can see. And then it's got some holes at the top for the antennas to poke out of. And I've simply crossed them over with some cable ties and I'm going to get a bend on them then just to get them back about the ready to rock and roll. Now, I will put a link to this um, in the description of this video as well once I've updated it. So if you do want to use the chameleon frame, you can just use that to replace your back end and it's ready to rock and roll and it simply bolts on the bottom. The top plate bolts back to it and it is as straightforward as that. Now, this is my six inch build and as I've said, um, I, I've been finishing it today. I've been using the Zing motors on this one. Flight controller wise, I've chose the Radix from Brain FPV. I love their flight controllers. I've been using them on and off for years and I'll be honest, I've burnt a few out through my own stupidity. Um, however, they're just a really good flight controller and they work nicely and easily. And I like the layout of the boards. I, I do feel they put quite a bit of effort into their board layout. So um, 
I've chose to use the standard Radix on this one. However, I'm not using their PDP or their power board. I've gone with an all-in-one ESC. Now, I'm not 100% if I've made the right decision or not yet. We will see as time goes on, but I've decided to go for the Hobbywing 60 amp four-in-one, and that's what I've mounted into this one, uh, and that's what I'm going to use. Now, I haven't fully set this up yet. Now, there are some things I've had to do on this to cram it all in. Even though I've extended the frame back, I've had to rotate the ESC the opposite way around so the power wires are actually coming out of the front. That means I'm going to ha actually have to completely customize how Beta Flight behaves with all of the motors. I'm gonna have to spend some time doing that and I'll probably do a video on that as well. You'll also see that thing is there. Yes, I've mounted a GPS on there. Because this is gonna be my freestyle one, I fancy putting one on. I had the room, there's no GoPro going on there. Why not? If the technology is available, why not use it? Um, and, and that's pretty much it. I've got to create a new mount to move the camera to the center because it's currently off-sided because I haven't actually done it properly. Um, and as I've said, that's it with the stack in the middle. And overall, it's a nice clean build, especially when you get the bits out the back end. This is probably the best it will ever look. It's probably going to head for the first tree very, very rapidly in, in the next couple of days. Um, and I will do a video on getting that set up just to show you guys, but that's, that's where we're at with it so far, basically. And that's going to be my new six inch freestyle racer for uh, the DJI digital FPV system. That's it for this video. I hope the information has been helpful. If it has, please do subscribe. There's a link in the description of this video. Please do check it out. It's only by you guys um, buying like the digital FPV system am I able to keep making videos like this. That's it. Thank you for watching and I will do another one again soon. Please do subscribe to the channel and check out all of the other videos we have available. They are also split into playlists to help you easily find the ones that are relevant to you. If you would like to support the channel, please check out the links that are in the description for each video. You will find the links for the products we've been talking about and it's only by you guys purchasing via these links that allows us to keep making videos and buy products to talk about in the future. Please also check us out and follow us on all of the social media platforms such as Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. We're beginning to build these accounts up and whilst it is early days, I would appreciate it if you would like, share and follow us on these platforms. Finally, please also check out my website, www.madrc.com. Now this is somewhere that we've been putting some of our blog posts and things like that over the last couple of years. So if you're interested in having a look, please do go check it out. That is it. Please do click that subscribe button. Thank you very much and I will do another video again soon.